welcome today we will do the understanding of uh, occupational repetitive action method so the name is very popular as okra method here we get two varieties of uh, no, evaluation one is okra index another is okra checklist so this is mainly for your upper arm shoulder neck and these are the regions where we get an understanding what are the difficult situations are there and what are the deformities are there and how do we understand the risk of these factors in any workplace or working condition or work situation ok. So, the name of this method is okra method, the occupational repetitive action method, occupational repetitive action method. So, this is okra. Who developed this? It is in 1996, Professor Colombini and Ossipitini developed this particular tool or this particular method. It is an observational method. So, if you have some video recording or if you are going to a particular uh, workplace and you are doing an direct observation, probably you will be able to get the information and you will get the okra index and uh, the okra checklist. To analyze for what this particular tool is, this tool is to analyze the ox workers exposure to a particular task involving various upper limb injuries risk factor. So, I just would like to mention over here, this particular tool is majorly for the upper limb disorder or upper limb uh, related risk or hazardous work ok. So, anything which is related to lower limb or you know legs or your trunk we will not be able to use this tool. It is only for the upper limb. So, shoulder, upper arm, lower arm these are the areas where we will get the analysis and when uh, somebody is involved in a particular task or in a particular work situation where these are these body parts are involved then only we can use this particular tool. This particular tool is designed to use by you know corporate technical specialist. First component who are there in this particular uh, development occupational safety and health operators ok. So, the people who are doing their task or doing their activities in this particular profession they were involved definitely different uh, ergonomist you know who are renowned uh, ergonomist they were involved time and method analyst. So, you know from the industrial engineering perspective time and method analyst and the production engineer because ultimately we need to see that is there any impact on the final productivity of that particular workplace or workstation. So, these are the four major contributor to develop this particular tool and to use this particular tool. So, who are they? Once again let us understand occupational health safety operators, ergonomists, time, um, time and method analyst and production engineers. But it is not like that only these are the people who can use this particular tool even from the, the result of this tool or inter, uh, you know, interpretation of the tool can be used by other professionals like you know designers, occupational therapists, physiotherapists and many others ok. But they are the major contributor. So, as I mentioned it has two major component one is okra risk index another is okra checklist. So, let us understand what is okra risk index. So, here we have two major terminology that is the overall number of technical action carried out in a particular shift. So, in this whole uh, method this technical actions are very important. 
So, we will be actually counting these technical actions. So, overall number of technical action which is being carried out in a particular shift divided by overall number of technical action which is recommended in that particular shift. So, ratio between these two are called as okra index. We can say that the ratio between the number of technical action actually carried out during the shift and number of technical actions which is specifically mentioned or recommended for that particular task is your okra index. What it does? It actually predicts the risk of upper extremity work related musculoskeletal disorder. Here I would like to mention whatever these tools we are talking about, these are mainly associated with work related musculoskeletal disorder, not anything else, not any other musculoskeletal disorder. Suppose a muscul a specific kind of you know um, musculoskeletal symptoms or musculoskeletal disorder which is associated with any other uh, causal factor like maybe pregnancy, maybe uh, you know gender or maybe weakness of some muscle groups or something those we will not be able to assess using any such tool only which is related to work related. So, causal factors are from work for those cases only these tools are uh, no uh, we will be able to use these tools otherwise it is not going to give you a correct result. So, here it is only upper extremity work related musculoskeletal disorder. The first most analytical and uh, most reliable method uh, for upper extremity and generally used for the redesigning. Okay. So, you have a design, you are redesigning it or before you design, you are trying to understand if this is a design, then what is going to happen. So, either in design process or in redesigning process, this particular tool is used on in-depth analysis of the workstation and work task. Okay. So, this is very important. We are only talking about workstation designing, redesigning and the task designing or redesigning. So, from this okra index and okra checklist, we are going to do this much. What is okra checklist? So, it is based on your okra index and very simpler to apply and generally recommended for the initial screening of workstation featuring repetitive task. Okay which is involve uh, your upper extremity and which is repetitive in nature. For such cases, this is a screening tool and this can be used to understand or majorly to identify the risk factor and going to help you in uh, deciding that what are the elements can be redesigned to improve the situation. So, that is okra checklist. So, these are the major body parts that we are going to get the analysis. First is your hand, elbow, wrist, forearm and shoulder. So, it is the whole upper extremity. So, these are some example where you can get such uh, like if your workstation is like this, then you can use this particular tool. But not only these are limited cases, you can use this particular tool wherever your upper extremity is involved and is uh, going to have some kind of repetitive task. Okay. So, these are some example. Now, let us understand what is the procedure, procedure to do this particular uh, analysis. First is your general aspect. Then okra definition you have to define it then you have to do the okra risk index that you are going to calculate it then you are doing the classification okra index result classification and finally the okra checklist so this is the procedure that you are going to follow for this particular method so let us understand what are the things available in general aspect. What exactly it mean? 
two assessment method which evaluate four main collective risk factor based on repeat respective duration. What are those? Repetitiveness. So, these are the factors that you are going to uh, get the information and it is going to help in your okra index calculation. So, repetitiveness, force, awkward posture, awkward movement and lack of recovery period. Now, if you look at each factor over here, you can see all are the causal factors of your any kind of musculoskeletal disorder, right? When you are talking about repetitive activity, of course, it is major contributing factor for your any um, cumulative trauma disorder or you can say musculoskeletal disorder. Force, if it is very high or you know you are uh, doing it in a uh, repetitive manner, then also it is bad. Awkward posture, of course, if it is static or dynamic, whatever it is, it is going to cause a lot of muscle load or extra load on your that particular group of muscle and lack of recovery period. So, this is very important. Suppose you are getting exposed to our some kind of you know uh, awkward posture. So, two separate similar uh, person is going to get an exposure to an awkward posture. One is getting enough recovery time to settle down and again he or she is doing whereas the other person is not getting the enough time to settle down and without coming back to the base level he or she is starting the job. Definitely uh, the, the second person is more prone to develop musculoskeletal disorder. Right. So, this recovery period that is why it is called cumulative trauma disorder. So, small small trauma is going to accumulate and that is going to cause the disorder. Right. So, understanding of recovery period for any particular job is very important. Many tools cannot explain this particular factor uh, properly. Whereas, they consider repetitiveness, force, awkward posture, awkward movement, many things. See, if you remember JSI or MFA, those tools are very, you know, uh, they, they even consider the duration of exposure. However, this recovery period, you know, how long they are doing and once they are stopping the work, after what is the duration, they are again starting that job so that the muscle group is coming back and getting relaxed properly. So, what is happening that you know, repeat, uh, recovery period that is not being explained in any other tool. But in this particular okra method or okra index, we are going to get that particular information. So, this is very important tool. If you can use it, you will get more detailed and inside, uh, insightful analysis. Okay? Now, other additional factors that is going to uh, you know help you in this particular method that is the mechanical factor, of course, environmental factor and organizational factor. We will describe or we will explain, we will discuss these factors separately in few slides or in the, in the next few slides. So, each factor is described and then each factor is classified to help identify possible requirements and preliminary preventive intervention. Okay. So, that is going to be done during this particular process. So, let us understand what is okra definition. So, you have a worksheet under that you have a single work and under that you have several small small tasks maybe two tasks maybe three tasks or maybe four tasks and each task will have their own cycle time and in each cycle you may have small small technical actions to be performed. Okra index is interested to understand those small elements which is called technical action. So, if you look at your 
uh, job that you are going to analyze. So, look at that particular worksheet, you find out that particular work which you are going to uh, get the analysis done. Under that particular work, you let you, you try to understand what are the major tasks going to be done to complete that and then you will see that for each task you have a specific cycle time. So, you are getting the repetition. So, this repetitive factor is coming into picture. So, once there is a repetition what will happen while doing that particular task you have very small small elements in that particular task. So, that is the technical action. So, let us understand the definition of each item. So, work is composed of one or more task in one worksheet. Within a single task there will be cycle a, a sequence of technical action and repeated rep it, it will be repeated over and over again always for the same uh, duration, same sequence ok that is important. And within each cycle there will be some technical action. So, elementary operation that enable the completion of the cycle ok. So, for example, take the pen, place it some place, take the screwdriver tighten it, grasp it. So, these are the technical uh, elements. So, maybe uh, we once we study somewhere you know task analysis, motion analysis and all those cases, they are also we, we have third blicks, right. So, those type of small small actions here we do not call them as a third blicks which is being uh, which is a terminology for your uh, you know task analysis and all those cases like time study, motion study for those cases whereas we will be calling them here as the technical action ok. So, you understand? So, these are at the micro level. So, you have a bigger job then you have a small small elements under each element you have a small cycle and each cycle will be completed by repetition of very small element or we will call them as the technical action. This sequence you need to understand, you have to detail it out before you start any kind of okra analysis. So, okra definition. The suggested procedure for assessing the risk should be you know pinpointing the repetitive task. This that is why I am saying very important part of okra is repetition. So, pinpointing the repetitive task with significant duration, pinpointing the repetitive task with significant duration, finding the sequence of technical action that is the job of the uh, of, uh, researcher, describing and classifying the risk factor, assembly data considering the duration and sequence of the different task and recovery period and then you need to brief and structure the assessment of the risk factor for a job as a whole. So, what you have to do? First, you have to identify the small element which you are going to get a repetition ok that small action. Once you have that finding the sequence of action. So, maybe you have one technical action which is getting repeated and you identified. You see that in the same cycle there is another technical action which is also getting repeated. Maybe two or three such elements are there or you can say two or three technical actions are there in a whole cycle. Now, you have to again identify once you have that you have to describe it ok. This is the technical action that you are going to consider as the action number 1. This is second. So, action number 2 then 3 action number 3 something like that you are going to define it once so that there is no uh, overlapping of action 1 and action 2. There is no common element between that ok. So, your timing are very specific. So, done. Once it is done then what you have to do? You have to give a sequence. So, this is technical action and this is going to be uh, no, performed at the very beginning. 
this is second third fourth and fifth maybe this is the concluding technical action okay so that way you have to create the cycle so that's why it is saying that you have to brief structured assessment of the risk factor of the job as a whole okay so that is very detailed job that you need to do wh while doing the uh, or while defining the okra done next is your okra index so as i mentioned earlier that overall number of technical action carried out in a particular shift divided by the number of technical action recommended in the shift so this is the definition so number of action per cycle and number of actions per minute we need to calculate so let us understand this particular thing in little more detail so we are what we are getting we are getting rta that recommended technical actions okay so calculation of this particular uh, uh, you know variable we do using this particular formula so what it says the number of technical action which is required to be performed in a particular shift is equal to summation of cf plus uh, no multiplied by f f i f f p i f c i multiplied by d i f r and f d now let us understand what is meaning of all these names or all these variables so it is here and you can see we can do up to n number so number of repetitive tasks performed during shift so you have suppose four such uh, repetitive tasks so you have to do it for individual four tasks and you have to then sum it up okay so i is the generic repetitive task and cf that is the frequency so frequency constant of technical action that is the 30 actions per minute that is the constant value so from there only you are going to get your recommended uh, technical task so you you can count your actual technical task using your you know uh, stopwatch or any other method and using this particular formula you are going to get your recommended technical task fp ff fc are the multipliers or multiplying factors with scoring ranging from 0 to 2 so you have a range and selected for force is fp posture that is the f sorry force ff so factor for force factor for posture factor for additional element that is the fc in each task okay so you suppose you have n number of tasks so here you will get n number of ff fp and fc values d means the net duration in minute of each repetitive task net duration of minute of each repetitive task what is fr fr is the multiplier factor so you must be remembering the multiplier that particular concept which is there in you know uh, uh, in niosh it was there in jsi so similarly here also we have the concept of multiplier so these are all pre-computed okay so multiplier factor for lack of recovery period this is very important as i mentioned earlier also this particular tool okra index consider the recovery time so if you are getting the recovery well definitely your risk for that particular musculoskeletal injury is less but if you are not getting recovery period then you know small amount is amount of trauma is getting accumulated and that particular trauma will cause uh, the disorder or discomfort in long run okay so here this fr is the lack of recovery period and fd is the multiplier factor according to the daily duration of repetitive task now 
to determine the overall number of RTA that is the recommended technical action within a shift we need to proceed as this particular method. So, these are the steps that you need to proceed through. Okay? So, let us understand that. For each repetitive task start from CF of 30 action per minute. So, that you need to calculate that CF 30 action per minute. Okay? For each task CF must be corrected for the presence and degree of risk factors like force, posture and additional risk factors. Then you need to multiply the weighted frequency for each task by number of minute of each repetitive task. So, for each repetitive task what is the total number of exposure, total number of minute that you need to multiply. Once all these things are there, then you have to sum the values obtained for the different tasks. So, you have task 1, task 2, task 3, then you have to add them up. The resulting value is multiplied by multiplier factor for recovery period. Apply the last multiplier factor that consider the total time spent in a particular repetitive task and then the value obtained like once we multiply all these small small elements then we get the um, you know represents uh, the total recommended number of technical action in the working shift. So, this is the detailed uh, understanding of the uh, the previous formula, this particular formula. Okay? So, this is the process how you should go ahead and compute this particular uh, recommended technical action. So, you have your uh, actual technical action uh, from your video or from your direct observation divided by the recommended technical action. Then you get your okra risk index. So, if it is higher than 1 definitely it is risky or if it is lower than 1 then it is within a uh, no comfortable zone right. So, you are not crossing the recommendation. What is recommended? You are within it. Okay? Then it is good. If it is more than that then definitely it is risky. Now, what is action frequency? constant. So, we need to understand each small variable with more detail. So, what it is? A constant for frequency of action involved in technical action part of a work shift. The literature supplies suggestions of limit action frequency values. The ranges are from 10 to 20 actions per movement per minute. Okay? The action frequency constant is fixed at 30 actions per minute. So, that is the recommendation. Okay? Next is force, force factor. So, our earlier one was the constant frequency. Next is the FF that is the force factor. So, what it is? A direct representation of biomechanical commitment. So, when you are your muscles are involved to do some job definitely there is a force requirement. So, that that biomechanical representation is done by the factor force. Use the Borg uh, no, 10 CR 10 category scale, uh, category ratio scale for you no know, rating the perceived exertion. So, you cannot really measure it, right? So, you need to ask what is the perception. So, at which scale this perception is? Once the action determined, operators will be asked to describe the uh, to each one of them with a progressive score from 1 to 0, 10. The calculation of the average exertion weighted over time involves multiplying the Borg scale score ascribed uh, to each action by its percentage duration within the cycle percentage duration 
within the cycle. So, you have a bar scale value multiplied by the percentage duration that is required to complete that particular element in a cycle. So, multiply that. Then the force factor is, is coming. Okay. So, you have a bar scale value CR10 scale value multiplied by a to, so, for that particular technical action, what is the percentage of duration is taken for that particular cycle? So, I am just giving an example. Suppose your total cycle time is 3 minutes. Okay. And for this particular technical action, uh, uh, you know, is continuing for 30 seconds. Okay. So, the percentage is 30 divided by 3 into 60 multiplied by 100, right? So, then that percentage you need to multiply with the with that particular value you need to multiply with your Borg's scale, Borg's value, okay? So, then the, uh, the value comes for the force factor. You know, this is one factor. The next is your postural factor. What it is? The assessment of posture must be done over a rep, uh, you know, representative cycle. Of course, every measurement that we are doing, we are doing for the uh, representative cycle. Okay. So, for a representative cycle, for each one of the repetitive task which is being examined. So, this must be uh, via the description of duration of the posture and or movement of the four anatomical segment, both right and left, maybe so shoulder, wrist, elbow and hand. So, what is the posture of these parts like these upper extremities, okay? Within the execution of every action, the joint segment involved where it is reaching an excursion greater than 50 percent of the joint range for at least one third of the cycle time. So, how you are calculating? So, suppose I am just taking an example, you have a range of motion of your uh, elbow joint. Okay. Now, you have to see that this particular elbow joint, that particular movement for 50 percent of that whole range. Suppose, it's, it has a range, it has a range, okay, maybe this is the range of that particular person's elbow joint. Now, this is the whole range. Now, it is crossing a range of more than 50 percent and this particular particular thing is being uh, like you know is being continued for at least one third of the cycle time. So, that is the value. So, the longer the time is the higher the value is or score is. Okay. So, if uh, it is very uh, common understanding that if you are uh, away from the normal range for longer duration definitely you are going to get more struggle to hold that particular posture. Here also we are hold, uh, no, going for the same uh, concept that if a joint range is you know, holding more than 50 percent that particular range for one third time of the whole cycle time then you need to consider it or you need to take it as a value. Okay. So, the percentage of stereotypical movement can be pinpointed by observing those technical actions that are all equal to each other for at least 50 percent of the cycle time or by a very short duration of the cycle time. So, this consideration you need to do when we are talking about the postural factor. So, all of these elements together lead to design of a useful scheme to identify the values of the postural multiplier factor that is the FP. Moving forward that is the additional factor what these are. Uh, so, these factors are not exhaustive and includes 
the use of the vibrating tool what these are requirements of absolute accuracy localized compression exposure to cold or refrigeration the use of gloves that interfere the required handling ability because you know if you are only um, you know wearing some kind of gloves and you are doing some job definitely it is going to restrict the whole movement objects handled have a slippery surface okay sudden movement repetitive impacts etc some psychosocial and organizational factors are also involved now this part is like you know is uh, you know varied okay it keeps on uh, changing variable scores can be assigned according to the type and the duration variable scores can be assigned according to the type and the duration now next is your recovery period factor this is very important factor so a period during which one or more muscle tendon uh, groups are basically at rest the following can be considered by you know breaks including uh, you know lunch break visual control task period within cycle that leave muscle groups totally at rest consecutively for at least 10 seconds almost every few minutes so all these cases so where you are going to get some recovery okay so during your lunch break your muscles are in you uh, know not doing anything so some you are doing some kind of visual task you are just reading you are some uh, inspecting so maybe those time th th during th that particular period your uh, upper extremities are not working okay then also it is in rest also some cases where you know every short duration you are getting some break so everything we will be considering as the recovery period for every hour without an adequate recovery period there is a corresponding multiplier factor so for each case you have a corresponding multiplier factor the overall risk is determined by the overall number of hours at risk so the overall risk you need to determine from the overall number of hours at risk so calculation of the okra exposure so we have a table so that i am going to show now so table uh, that particular table provides the necessary parameter for dealing with all the multiplier factors and calculating the okra index these results provide the basis of struggling method uh, no such struggling recommended technical action in accordance to, with the okra index so let us understand this factor very clearly now how these are the action frequency constant okay so you have for right arm you have for left arm so a b c d that means your parts okay now force factor you know prov uh, you know it's a perceived effort from the box this box uh, cr10 scale you will get all these pre computed value so from here you can see for a what is b what is c what is d what is this is for right and this is for left then you will get the calculation of f f that is the force factor coming to postural value so this is these are the values and these are the factors corresponding factors so for shoulder for elbow for wrist and hand okay this is for your uh, right this is for your left so you can give this value and you can calculate the fp now additional factors similarly 048 so scale value and then this the multiplier and here also you get this particular thing is is the fc now duration of repetitive task you can have the duration over here now number of recommended actions for repetitive task in a 
uh, in total. So, partial result without recovery factor that you need to do this alpha, beta, gamma, delta for right and this is for your left. So, you can have both the things for left and right. Now, here is the hours calculation and the minute cal like uh, duration, total duration. So, that is the recovery here and this is the FD. Once you get all these things, then you can have this value that is the total number of action observed in repetitive task. So, that you are going to calculate from the actual video and the recommendation you will get from all these tables. Okay? And you get this particular value and then you get this ATA divided by RTA that is the okra index. Okra index for right and okra index for left. Okay. So, once you get all this uh, detail, uh, if you want to go into more detail about this particular uh, tool and the calculation, you can refer this book or you can go to the original paper of this particular tool, then you can get more detailed calculation. Due to uh, constraint of the time, we may not go into further discussion about this uh, calculation, we can do it in the discussion forum. So, this way you can calculate the okra index, fine. Now, how to use this index? We calculated. Now, what next? So, how to use the okra index to redesign the task or the workstation? So, as I mentioned, it's if it is more than one, definitely it is risky. If it is equal to or less than one, then if it, it is acceptable, right? So, the workstation is analyzed using the okra index check the presence of risk factors uh, for the upper limb. So, if you see that okra index is higher, then definitely there is a risk. Now, you have to go back and check each factor and you have to see why these up, uh, no, shoulder, upper arm, uh, then uh, elbow, wrist, how these things are, you know, um, uh, getting exposed to some kind of risk. So, that checking you have to do for the upper limb and use the same index to detect the risk factor, what you need to deal with to minimize the workers exposure. Now, once you do the intervention, then what you need to do? You have before okra index for set of people for a set of job and you have after okra in, like after intervention the okra index set of people and for the set of job. Then you can definitely have a comparison. You can use any kind of statistical test which uh, is suitable. Um, uh, I would suggest go for the pair T test probably. It will help you to understand these values and uh, maybe uh, you can have some more test which is you no, know, uh, which is suitable to such kind of cases and you can do the comparison saying that your intervention is effective or not effective. So, if okra index significantly effective or not effective, okra index may be reduced for uh, need to be reduced so that you know you see the improvisation. Okay? So, that way we use the okra index. So, several version of okra index are described in which the different risk factors making up the index are gradually reducing. So, that way you can. So, maybe do the first version, second version, third version like that you keep on working it till you are not satisfied. Okay? So, this is the kind of you know progressive optimization task using okra. You can read through it. I will uh, highlight some major point. So, these tables uh, propose a summary of okra index indices in which the optimization of each individual factor or set of factors are shown so that you can see how posture, how force and all these things are improving. The initial okra value was 
one for the right hand and 5.4 for the left hand and job being analyzed comprises two alternative tasks that is A and B featuring task A is equal to 53.3 actions per minute and B is 63.7 actions per minute. So, both of them were for the right hand and after reducing the action frequency A is reduced to 45 and uh, B is 45. So, both cases it became 45 actions per minute and uh, minute for right and for left 35 actions per minute for both cases for uh, A and for B. So, total number of actions per shift for right hand reduced from 18,144 to 14,472. So, this also is reduced. So, that way it, it shows there is an improvement. So, how do we use it for your redesigning? So, introducing a reduction in the use of force, the okra index for right was 5.5 and okra index for left was 4.4. It is also to recalculate the okra index when nothing but the distribution of recovery time, recovery period is optimized. So, recovery period jo hai that you if you are you know redistributing, rearranging once you are doing that or then only the optimization can be done. So, anyway we always say we cannot make it zero any risk we cannot make it zero we just can do the optimization. So, by optimizing two factors simultaneously the okra index reduced 4.1 and 3.1 for left right and left uh, respectively and if three variables are optimized then maybe it can come down 3.3 and 2.2. Now here is a concern that how you do it. It is not always a scope of your research that you ha can handle all three, three you know, uh, influencing factors. It is sometimes possible only one factor or sometimes it is possible all three factors. Okay. So, depending on the situation, depending or you, on your research objectives, depending of, on the available resources, you should see which is possible and how do you take it further. So, classification. So, what it says? No, it has a classification of this okra index value by considering the trend of upper extremity work related musculoskeletal disorder in reference to the working population that are not exposed to specific occupational risk. This uh, you know calculation has been done. It says that if it is um, less than equal to 1.5 the risk is absent. So, it is green 1.6 to 2.2 not relevant risk green or yellow and slowly it is increasing and it says if it is more than 9.1 then definitely it is very very high risk. So, this is quite similar but so you you cannot expect something go more than this okay now now coming to the okra checklist so once we have okra index then we go for the okra checklist now let us understand okra checklist so from okra index only we can have this value okra checklist the this particular checklist describes a workplace and estimate the intrinsic level of exposure as if the workplace if used for a whole of a shift by one worker. It makes easy to find out which workplace in the company imply a significant exposure level. Okay, so it it try to inquire which is going to give more problem. So, the exposure levels are classified as 
absent, lightly present, media, moderate present or medium and high. So, in the next stage, it is possible to estimate the exposure index or indices for the operators considering their rotation through the different workplaces and applying the following formula. What it is? So, score A multiplied by percentage of PA. Now, what is the uh, plus score B into percentage of PB and continue ok. So, score A and score B are obtained with the checklist for various workplace on which the same operators uh, work and percentage of PA and PB represents the percentage duration ok. So, as I mentioned always in okra you know, duration of exposure is very important. So, percentage of duration of the repetitive task in that particular shift. So, this is the formula that we use and this is the you know content of the checklist for each risk factors and the corresponding scores. So, the, the greater the risk higher the score value. So, let us understand uh, this you can read it out because it is very difficult in this particular um, forum to read all these questions. So, I suggest you refer this particular you know handbook or maybe you can download it from original paper to get this checklist and read it out. If you have any difficulties to understand this particular checklist maybe uh, later we can Discuss, discuss it. So, everything is mentioned very detailed ok in a detailed manner. So, how you take this as a simple checklist. So, this is the whole content ok. Now, let us understand what are the advantages of okra index. So, it this particular index provides a detailed analysis of main mechanical and organizational determinants of the risk of upper extremity work related musculoskeletal disorder. So, both mechanical and organizational factors. It is linked with your MTM analysis, motion time measurement analysis and subsequent task design language is very easily uh, you know, understood by the technician. So, you, anyone who has basic idea of musculoskeletal disorders, basic risk factors of musculoskeletal disorders, most, uh, you know, any kind of time study and motion study, they can easily understand this particular tool and they can perform it. It predicts uh, the health effect on upper extremity musculoskeletal disorder within a set of limit. It compares different work context can stimulate different design or redesign solution of the workplace and job organization. This is very important. You can say this is better than this and this is better than that. So, that way you can have lot of comparison and you can choose the best out of any particular design. So, maybe for a single solution you have, you have four variant, four varieties of design and using this particular okra you can choose any one of them which is giving best result to have a better uh, upper extremity musculoskeletal health. Okay? Uh, consider all repetitive tasks which is involved in a complex and estimate the workers risk level. So, these, these are the advantages for the okra index. However, there are some disadvantages, ok. Some more advantages, it is purely observational and easy and quick to use. It also provides scores related to exposure level like green, yellow, red and very red and produces an uh, exposure map in the production unit referred to the total population and to male and female separately. 
useful for setting priorities and planning the job rotation of course you if you see that this particular cycle is you know getting more repetitive and uh, it is going to cause uh, you know lot of trouble then what you can do you can have some kind of job rotation of uh, here and you can set the recovery time so that you know th there is less exposure towards the duration of exposure so consider all the repetitive tasks involved in a complex job estimating the workers exposure level so these are the advantages disadvantages so can be time consuming you can understand for each factor fr f p f c for each cases you have lo you need lot of time to calculate those values and observation period also it's quite longer right so can be time consuming especially for complex task and multiple task job it takes lot of time to understand the task first is the definition of the action okay uh, technical action you have to define starting point end point maybe pinpointing those seconds are very important right so it's a tedious job as well so value of multiplier factors determined by using non homogeneous approaches and data from the literature so this is little tough part and initially difficult to learn the concept of technical action so who are very much familiar with the motion study time study like time measurement motion measurement for them maybe it is easy but uh, those people uh, uh, who are not you know uh, exposed towards such kind of study for them understanding the technical actions are little difficult so that is a uh, difficult so you have to have a prior knowledge of mtm otherwise you will not be able to do it does not consider all psychosocial factors okay it's not considering all psychosocial factors very few related to the individual sphere it requires a video camera for you know performing the analysis in a slow motion because you are talking about technical action technical action when it is in a full speed you will not be able to uh, separate out at which second it is starting and which second it is ending so for that you need to have a, a good camera like recording video recording system you should have an option to start pause resume and all these options very clearly so that you can differentiate the action 1 action 2 and action 3 and so on okay so these are some the requirements and these are some kind of disadvantages for this particular tool it allows only a preliminary analysis of the main risk determination with a present overestimation allows only an estimation of exposure per risk area and not a precise risk evaluation so it's just a gross evaluation if observers are not well trained there is a possibility of misclassifying the risk factors so as i mentioned you need to have a good understanding about ergonomics uh time measurement motion measurement and uh, such related uh, you know uh, other tools like borg scale and all other tools does not consider the psychophysical factors as i mentioned earlier not useful for analytical design or redesign of task of work places mm, so if it is analytical in nature probably this will may not be a helpful tool for your case so training period both method generally requires two days of training time it's an estimation okay it's not fixed so it depends what is the training intensity 
follow up sessions to ensure the training efficacy because it may happen that while training you understood and while actually implementing there is some uh, you know a confusion generates so confusion comes so maybe they you can have some kind of refreshment the application time of okra index is depend uh, is dependent on the complexity of the task and job and for a task with a cycle time of 30 second it takes about 30 to 45 minutes to complete that particular analysis the analysis of a generic task or the workplace using the checklist it takes about 10 to 15 minutes but this is completely a generic guideline it is not absolute so i suggest before you go for actual data collection using this okra checklist or okra index you first you know uh, practice it with some kind of pilot data once you are habituated with all these variables specifically fc fr fp P and so on then it will be very easy for you to gather information and do the data collection with less time span what do you need you need pen and paper video camera for uh, which will allow you to have a very good recording clear recording of each technical actions which is important and both methods have specialized softwares available for loading and processing the data and results you can buy that one separately i do not have any specific information who are the seller of it maybe you can you need to search it and you need to get we may have some kind of discussion or help uh, at the discussion forum but right now i will not be able to tell you who are uh, what are what is the name of these softwares okay but this is available in the market you can buy it and use it okay which will uh, uh, enhance the process of analysis partially okay that's all for okra so what i suggest this is little tricky tool this is little time consuming tool so everyone should practice okra index and okra checklist for your own scenario okay and once you because computation of okra index is little tough so once you do that then only you will have more query more uh, you know and uh, 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 questioning about that particular part and you can ask it before you complete this particular course i suggest that you learn this particular uh, tool in detail this is very important and useful and you know a uh, good tool for upper extremity musculoskeletal disorder that's all for okra index and okra checklist